Hey guys, you're with South Africa's e-commerce expert, Warwick Kearns. I've been selling online for 15 years. I've done a ton of importing and I was asked to come and speak to you today about the importing process. Like how do you get products from your supplier over in China or anywhere else for that matter, down here to the bottom tip of Africa. Now, I've done this a lot. I was the first person importing GoPros into South Africa many years ago. We then later had the agreement, the um, distribution of, uh, rights over the DJI drones and we've imported all of those, millions of rands of stuff, and tons of accessories and lots and lots of stuff. So let me quickly, in like five minutes or less, try and explain to you the process that you're gonna go through once you've confirmed your order with your supplier. So let's assume that we're starting there. You've got a supplier, you know what you want, you get your invoice from them, and most of the time, Chinese suppliers are gonna ask you to pay upfront, right? So that's now done. What next? How do you get the products from them to you? Well, you got a bunch of options. In fact, there are many, many different options, but I'm gonna narrow it down to the one that you're most likely gonna go with and the most common option. Now, firstly, let me start with um, payment of the couriers, like who pays? Because you can totally use your supplier, the company in China, they will be able to use their partners to send it to you. And that's probably the easiest way, let's be honest. They just add the cost of the courier to the invoice, you add it to what you pay them, and then they take care of it. Um, in the simplest form. But you could also choose to use your own courier or freight forwarder to go and collect from them. And that's actually gonna be a bit cheaper. So that is gonna save you a few bucks more often than not. Once you confirm that, let's say that you are going to get your courier to import it, or hey, even if you're using their couriers, either way, you still need to, to do a few things on this side. Because firstly, do you have an importer's license? Do you need an importer's license? Well, actually, when you're starting out, you can import products um, under your own name without actually setting up an importer's license. Now this is cool for people who are just starting out. You can actually use your ID number and within 12 months, you can do four imports, maximum four imports to a maximum value of a total of 50 grand and you can import that stuff just using your ID number. Beyond that, you will need to go and register your company for a import license and you can do that online at the CIPC website or you can go down to your local SARS office. Now with that license, or in the beginning, just with your ID number, you can import that product. Here's a little ninja tip for you though, is that when your products hit customs in South Africa at the borders, whether at the, at the ocean or the airport, they're gonna inspect it and they need the invoice. Now you can actually get the invoice from your supplier and submit it in advance so that it speeds up the process of you getting your products. Now that's important because when you've paid up front, your money, your capital, your cash flow is tied up in those products and you know that you need to get it as soon as possible so that you can start selling it and get that money back into the bank account. So let's talk about the shipping timeframes quickly because the quickest way is to air freight it. And that's probably what you're gonna do depending on the size, but hey, it's expensive. So when you're air freighting stuff, the bulkier the goods, it can get really expensive. So for very bulky stuff, you might wanna put it on the ocean to sea freight it. And that's gonna drop the cost drastically, but it's also going to increase the time that it's gonna to take to get to you. Previously, we used to work on like six to seven weeks. Now, after COVID, things just take forever. So that's gonna take a really, really long time. And knowing that when a growing company has limited cash flow, sometimes it's actually just easier to air freight it. And as a third option, middle option is to sometimes air, uh, sea freight it from China to Dubai to the Middle East and then air freight it down here. That kind of halves the time and it also halves the cost. So that's a middle option. So air freight most expensive but quickest, sea freight slowest but cheapest and then middle option is to sea freight it to China to Dubai and then air freight it down. But now when it gets here, you can clear it through customs. Yes, you're gonna get a VAT invoice. Yes, you are going to have to pay before they release it to you. And you also need to know what your duties are gonna be. Now your supplier can give you an HS tariff code. Then you can go on, online on the SARS website or on the Ansarco website, and you can get a PDF that outlines all of the HS tariff codes and the duties that are gonna be paid or charged to you to get that product through customs. And every product has a different amount. It could be zero, it could be 40%. So you have gotta know that upfront because you have gotta factor that into your profit margins to see if you're gonna make a profit. Um, and please do that way in advance of even paying for the product. So now it comes through customs. Hopefully you've pre-cleared it by giving the invoice to, to the customer guys and then they'll invoice you in advance, you pay in advance so that when it gets to them, they just check the box, they let it go. And then it arrives at your door. My advice 
is to either use a courier like DHL, FedEx, or one of the big big known companies because they are gonna just, that's what they do. They're gonna do a good job at it. Um, there are multiple other companies that also can do this for you. My personal recommendation is to use a freight forwarder. A freight forwarder, it costs a little bit of extra money, but they are gonna do all of the admin for you and they're gonna get that cleared through customs quicker. And importantly, in the rare event that your product does get stopped and checked by customs, that's when a freight forwarder is going to help to get it cleared way quicker. They're gonna have their connections there. They're gonna go and um, speak to the right people and get your product out the door. Um, you definitely don't want your money, your cash flow, your product sitting in a warehouse just gather, gathering dust when you need to have it and to sell it. So those are my tips in terms of clearing products. If you have any questions, you can hop onto the Insarco website. We actually have a free mini course on importing. That's insarco.ca today. And otherwise, I'll catch you guys on Instagram, on socials, or in our community. Chat to you guys later.